Welcome to my channel. This is Andre with Yup. I said it. Like, share, and subscribe. Please hit the bell notification. For the Trump supporters and Donald Trump himself, it has been a horrible past couple of days. It's been a horrible past four years. It's been brutal on us, Trump supporters. And Donald Trump has been taking an ass whooping like you've never seen. But I promise you, by the end of this video, you are going to feel so much better about the things that have been happening. All right, we got some major victories and we got to get into them today, guys. Like, share, and subscribe to my channel. We are winning. Now, first, I want to show you some libtards here uh, that have uh, caused the internet to explode. Um, when I watch these clips, guys, I just, it's heartbreaking, but at the same time, I feel bad for these people. I've, you know, their parents are raised them the wrong way. Uh, they have no moral standards and they're just demonic. They're very demonic. Um, you know, can you believe in 2024 that the mainstream media is so powerful and the delusion that they've caused on people has caused people to forget about human life? It has caused people to not care about other human beings so much so that these people wish that Donald Trump actually got assassinated. Take a look. John Wilkes Booth, if you can hear us, if you are with us, please, please. John Wilkes Booth, if you're, if you're listening, please. We're not even sending our best to assassinate. Cause what the hell was that? Lee Harvey Oswald would never be. John Wilkes Booth would never. Today was like this close to being the best day ever. Also the person that at Trump at his rally was exercising that right that all those Republicans were fighting for. So can you really blow it? I just found out about this. Sh it just happened. I haven't even had a second to process. You're telling me somebody finally had the balls to bring a pew pew. And in this, we were a second away. We were a centimeter away from half of the problem being gone. And you missed. There was a white man attached to that trigger. I know it. We were a centimeter away! Oh. The most loving people in the world, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. Look at all that acceptance. I think we forgot to mention when we were asking for, you know, someone to bring back as dating problems like they used to, we forgot to mention that they have to have good aim. Remember, genies are tricky that way. The message to whoever shot at Trump, use the lame ass bitch. It's hot of fuck. Did you shoot and miss? No, if you have a mission, make sure you hit that target the fuck right. Bitch, you ain't practice before you get your ass over there. Huh? Huh? You was nervous? Your hand was Just got out of the movies and for a split second, I thought Donald Trump had been a And I thought to myself, this is the best day of my life. And then he wasn't. So it's the worst day of my life. I was just on the phone with my grandma. She called me and she was like, did you hear that someone tried to sh Trump? And I was like, yep. And we were talking about it because she was watching the news actively. And I was like, I just really really hope because i she she was a person who broke the news to me that a person had uh, been unalived and that the sh was also unalived um and i was like i just really hope that the sh is white like i hope i i hope that the sh is white um because even if the sh is white and some hyper leftist with manifestos and all kinds of stuff at least they're white if the sh is brown or black it becomes open season on black and brown folks in a way that is universally accepted in this country and has been accepted in this country for a long time but will be politically justified and motivated by the attempted of a former president there's a lot of implications and things to unpack from this moment and one of them is the possible racial reckoning surrounding the reality of the race of the person who pulled the trigger so once again I agree with this commenter. I hope that the shirt was white. Thanks for coming to my TED. How do you miss that? We don't miss those. Come on, man. We don't miss those. One shot at greatness to be mentioned in the history books. And you miss the shot? <laughs> Hey, um, Trump got shot at. Got shot at. Trump got shot at. So, like, did he? Oh, yeah, he lived. Huh. Yeah, and what's worse is he looked really cool when it happened. What do you mean he looked cool when it happened? He, unfortunately, looked very cool when it happened. How do you look cool getting shot at? Well, 
Like, what did he do? Pop right back up with blood streaming down his face, pumping a fist in the air, shouting USA, USA, USA until a crowd of thousands joined in? That's exactly what he did. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. I know. Crap. We're gonna lose the election, huh? Big TikTok. I got one thing to say about today's news. You had one job. Whoever that was, I can't say it because I don't want no problems, but you had one fuck job and you missed. Thanks a lot. You had one job and you missed. Yes. So when the mainstream media gets on uh, Joy Reid and, and she and they all get on here and they say, you know, Donald Trump is like Hitler. You know, he's the Antichrist. Uh, he's going to end the world. Like uh, Robert De Niro said, he's going to end the world. He's going to destroy the whole world. When you get on P TV uh, with your large platform of millions and millions of people and you share shorts and news clips of this kind of rhetoric, this is the result of it. Those people that you just watched, those are the people that are radicalized by the mainstream media. There needs to be lawsuits against the mainstream media, endless lawsuits until they go out of business, if you ask me, in my opinion. So tired of it, absolutely tired of it. So they radicalized the shooter, all right? Uh, now they're claiming that he's a Republican. But that ain't got nothing to do with it, okay? Uh, conservatives don't go out and kill other conservatives. They don't delete each other. They just don't do that. The only party... Okay, the only party that is about violence that always is starting violence when they don't get their way are the Democrat Party, are the liberals, the progressives, the ones on the left. Those are the ones doing the violence. Okay, and they're proud of it. They're proud of it. These are their children right here. They sent out to do their dirty work. All right, that's what you're looking at. These are the spawn of the uh, adult liberals. Okay. And trust me, uh, behind the scenes, okay, at CNN, MSNBC, they probably sound something like their children. Uh, they don't sound like logical individuals, all right? Uh, but that's okay. That's okay. You know why? Because we are winning, as I stated in the beginning of the video. We are going to win. The party of logic, peace, kindness, and love will win. I don't care what they say about conservatives. The actions speak louder than words, okay? They always will speak louder than words. I'm from a liberal city, Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, most people there probably hate Donald Trump, uh, but there's a lot of people waking up, actually. Uh, but the proof is in the pudding. When you look at where they live, when you look at how they live, when you see their environment and you see who's running the show, this is your proof. You don't need any more proof. All right, well, the conservative live and we rest our head we keep 2a we keep law and order it's not like that where we are that's what nobody told me when i was younger nobody told me that it wasn't like this uh, in red states i had to find out on my own as my family members lied to me but anyway there has been significant wins although we've had losses now through tragedy comes triumph okay this is uh, this is something i know very well i know about tragedy because i've experienced a lot of tragedy in my life all right but after the tragedy comes great triumph, comes great courage. So by this happening to Trump, uh, actually will backfire in the enemy's face. He's still alive and kicking. This time he'll be, uh, he'll be way, way more prepared uh, as he knows what he's up against now. When evil shows their hand, then you have a chance to ramp it up and you have the courage to take charge. That's exactly what's happening now as Judge Eileen Cannon dismisses. Trump's classified documents case. Take a look at this glorious moment. Just a day after he was targeted in that attempted assassination, our Eamon Javries joins us with some breaking news. Morning, Eamon. Good morning, Carl. That's right. The former president is here in Milwaukee, and he arrives to Milwaukee with a big win here in the courts just within the past couple of minutes. Federal Judge Aileen Cannon has now moved to dismiss the documents case against the former president of the United States. She's arguing uh, here in this dismissal document that we just got, uh, Carl, within the past minute uh, that the special counsel's appointment itself was unconstitutional. The judge says the bottom line is this. The appointments clause of the Constitution is a critical 
critical constitutional restriction stemming from the separation of powers, and it gives to Congress a considered role in determining the propriety of vesting appointment power for, inferiors office, for inferior officers. The special counsel's position effectively usurps that important legislative authority, transferring it to a head of department, and in the process, threatening the structural liberty inherent in the separation of powers. So on separation of powers and constitutional grounds now, the federal judge has dismissed the case against the former president of the United States involving classified documents at Mar-a-Lago. That is a big political win for the former president here ahead of uh, his appearance at the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee, uh, where he is going to accept his party's nomination uh, for president of the United States. We now, in a normal world, in a compassionate world, in a world where, you know, you have some humility, in a world where you have, you know, some uh, forgiveness, I don't know, um, you know, things that the Bible teach, in that kind of world, you would have people uh, actually... Uh, feeling a little bit bad for President Trump but after all he's been through um, because of the tyrannical left lunatic uh, mainstream media news outlet corporation. But that's just not the case. <laughs> They're back on attack for President Trump. They're uh, making their way back to their old ways uh, and they re really like to blame President Trump. Uh, for him getting almost assassinated. I think that's going to be pretty impossible to convince President Trump that it's actually his fault that someone tried to take his life. But they are certainly going to try. And I want you to listen to this news clip as President Trump celebrates the case being dismissed. Uh, Jose, we've just gotten our first reaction from the former president himself in a post on his social media site in which he writes, as we move forward in uniting our nation after the horrific events on Saturday, this dismissal of the lawless indictment in Florida should be just the first step followed by, let me let this uh, pick up here as they're testing the audio here. I'm gonna switch microphones, Jose. He says this uh, dismissal should be just the first step followed quickly by the dismissal of all the witch hunts as he describes them. The January 6th hoax in Washington, Manhattan DA's zombie case, New York AG scam, fake claims about a woman I never met. He goes on to say towards the end of this statement here, which is quite lengthy, that these are all an election interference conspiracy against Joe Biden's political opponent, me. Let us come together and end all weaponization of our justice system and make America great again. Jose, I'll share two thoughts as I'm reading this with you for the first time on the air. First of all, obviously, the former president and his allies very much celebrating this ruling today. Second, I think about everything we've heard from the former president and his campaign over the last 36 hours or so about his desire to try to unite the country moving forward. What I hear here is much the same tone we've become used to from the former president, talking about criminal cases against him, one of which has already resulted in a conviction by a jury of his peers as hoaxes and witch hunts, uh, suggesting they're all brought against him by Joe Biden. This is much the same tone that we've heard from Donald Trump and sort of pre his new push towards unifying the country and now post. So we're seeing the same Donald Trump celebrating this move today and, and pushing it one step further, suggesting all of the charges, criminal and civil against him, need to be dismissed. Absolutely crazy. Raise your hand if you think that all the Trump cases are witch hunts and they're hoaxes and they're not true. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so yeah, they should all be dismissed because the timing of everything the manner in which they bought it and the sheer fact that the Democrats don't have anything to run on. They absolutely have nothing to run on guys. Their platform is a zero. It's a, on a scale to one to 10, it's a zero. Actually, it's a negative 10. They don't have anything to run on. They don't have anything to propose to the people that would be great for America where people could see, Oh yeah, if we put Democrats in power, we'll be doing a lot better. They have nothing like that. Isn't that dark? <laughs> that's dangerous isn't that isn't that stupid not to have an actual platform uh where people could see the value and what you're trying you're going for a job interview you show up to the job interview <clears throat> in a sweatsuit no shoes you no haircut you stink you have your kids with you <laughs> okay, all right you pulled up on a bike all right you change your bike up outside the door they saw it, they watched you come in and then when you get into the job interview you say i promise you i'm gonna tear this place up <laughs> okay i promise you that i'm not going to be a great asset to your company as a matter of fact i want to destroy it 
And, and, and the, the interviewer might say, why would you come to an interview like this, sir? Why would you do this? And then the person that showed up at the interview with a sweatsuit on, no haircut, smelling like pee, rode up on his bike, chained up. He says, well, I know you'll hire me because I'm black, <laughs> right? <laughs> I know you'll hire me because I'm a woman. That's it. That's what the Democrat party looks like. That's what it looks like. They're telling the people, we don't have anything. I, I, I'm not going to be a great asset to your American company. I'm going to actually destroy it. If you hire me, um, because you know, I'm self-destructive. I've never had a business. I never had any major responsibilities. As a matter of fact, I don't know what I'm doing here. I would destroy your company, but you should still hire me because you need some black people around here. How, how crazy does that sound, guys? But that's what the Democrats are proposing. That's what it's like. They don't have anything to show for. They're actually really bad for the economy, as you can see. And they pride themselves on identity politics. They think you're just supposed to vote for them because you're Spanish or you're black, or you're a woman, or you're going to stand up for alphabet rights or something crazy. How about, do you have anything in those policies that can help me take care of my family a little bit better? That can help me run my business more efficiently? That can uh, drive down the cost of inflation? That can make things more affordable like gas prices? Do you have anything in there that says that? Is there anything in that package for me? Oh, no, we don't have anything for you. You don't matter to us. We're your government. We'll tell you that you need to eat the bugs. You'll own nothing. You'll have nothing. And you'll eat the bugs, says Klaus Schwab. Okay? That's the Democrat Party, guys. And if you vote for them, that's what you're voting for. I wish it wasn't so. I wish there was a great competition between the conservative and the Democrats. And we got to pick and we got to say, hmm, this is going to be a good matchup. It's going to be a good matchup. Who's going to win? Who am I going to pick? Let's see who's competing for our best interest, the best, right? Who's the best competitor for the American people? That would be nice. That would be actually a really good, really good time. We could actually enjoy ourselves and say, you know, we got a free market. We have two individual parties who want to make our lives better. Let's see who's got the best policies. And you can measure them. You can weigh them up against each other. But we don't have that. What we have is some deranged lunatics on the left. And we have a conservative party that's saying, guys, do you really want that? Or do you want our platform, which is the best for our country? I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Like, share, and subscribe. A lot of lunatics out here, but I'm pretty sure you're not one of them if you're watching this video. I thank you for watching all the way to the end. And I hope you like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell notification so that you get all my latest updates. I would love to do this full time. And thank you so much for all the people who support me. I love you for real. All right.